Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series in Hearts of Iron 4, Kaiserreich has Romania. Good old Romania, uh, down here in the Balkans. So, I don't really have like a major plan for this series, i.e. Uh, what paths we're going to be going down. I don't know if we're going to stay in National Populist. I know there's the democratic coup, kind of democratic coup that can happen with Michael. I'm not too sure. We'll, we'll just kind of go with it as, uh, as things uh, happen here. But we'll be aligning ourselves with Russia. Eventually going to war with the Austrians, and of course going to war with Bulgaria as well. We're starting off with 19 factories. We're currently at 8, 0, and 11. A lot of our units don't seem like they're in tip-top shape. But we do got 16 of them, so I mean, that's not too, too bad. We're going to bring them down to the border with Roma uh, with Bulgaria right away, because guess what? Uh, we're going to be invading them first in, in about a year's time. Let's get our invasion ready to go. National focus. Maneuvers in the Carpathians. It allows Transylvanian ultimatum, access to military. Well, I mean, I guess we might as well just go down for maneuvers of the Carpathians. There's nothing else we can actually do at the moment. Give me Army Navy experience. How many trains do we have? We have 11. 30% stability. I will trade. Yeah, I'll make that trade. Give me give me 15 trains for 5% stability. Uh, how many resource slots? We've got three. We will go with all of our basics. We'll go one, two, and three. Fantastic. And what do we want to build? You know what? Give me one civilian factory in uh, in Bucharest right now. I'm going to guess and say we probably need a lot of rifles. We're down 125 fighters. We're down 628 rifles, 21 support equipment, and, and 7 artillery. Honestly, it's not so bad. We produce oil. I mean, that's nice. It means people will be... Well, probably actually once we uh, hit unpause. We should start exporting oil. Presumably. Actually, never mind, we don't because Germany actually has a monopoly on the, on our oil fields. Excellent. Very happy with that. So, we're going to get some steel. We're going to get that from the Russians because, again, Russia is going to be our ally in the future. It, it, can I scroll this down? Nope. It's going to be stuck up there. The King of Romania was still a relatively young country when it joined the Vilt Krieg in 1916. The grand ambitious plan of taking Transylvania from the Hungarians. A dream that remains unrealized to this day. Despite some initial success in 1916, the small country is quickly overwhelmed by German, Austrian, and Bulgarian troops. Against all odds, the Romanian army did not break and instead established a new potential around Isi. Uh, with help from the Russian and the French, they rebuilt their strength and repelled the Central Powers again and again. Uh, the end only came with the Russian Revolution and the collapse of the Eastern Front raid and Romania's position untenable. Many young men had died for an ideal that ultimately proved just out of reach. The situation the country itself has brought has improved for naught. The Treaty of Bucharest was bitter, even more so because the Romanian army had fought well. With this, a stab in the back narrative emerged. Romania was betrayed by the Russians. They were left alone by the Western Entente. They were sabotaged from the inside by traitorous minorities such as Jews. Radical movements rose quickly, fueled by bitterness, raunchism, and social issues such as in unequal land use. By 1936, the strongest of those movements was the Legion of Archangel Michael, popularly known as the Legionnaire Movement, led by the young charismatic Corneal Corneo. The captain of the Iron Guard. Cordino? Cordino? <laughs> in 1927, King Ferdinand passed away and was succeeded by his son, Carl II. Even though know, Carl has a reputation for being quite the womanizer, war had really left its mark on the king. His dream is clear. To succeed where his father had failed. In his quest, the king found an ally equally driven and struck a deal with Cordino. Uh, the two men united in a revanchist fervor and tore apart the democratic system in a 1933 election. After the assassination of Prime Minister I.G. Duca by the Iron Guard, Cornel was formed the first legionary government, the first step towards Greater Romania. While the king and the captain might be allies in Urvacha's project, it is clear they ultimately do not wish to share power. The so-called great game between these two men quickly uh, began quickly after the elections after Cornel started his ambitious land reform, an issue very popular amongst his base. Influential landowners appealed to the king, who in turn forced Cornel to halt his reforms. With the growing en uh, enmity between the two men, the power struggle can only grow more fierce, but neither one ready to give up power. As long as they share the common goal of Great Romania, they will work together, but after that, only God knows. I don't think we need to know the mechanics. I think it's actually, it'll be a little bit more fun if we just don't know the mechanics of the great game. Okay, the future of Romania. I guess we have to choose right away whether or not uh, we'll be going national popular, or we'll be going... Um, an autocrat here. As the year 1936 begins, the struggle between the, two, uh, the nation's two competing leaders, Carl II and Prime Minister Corneo, is entering a new phase. Deadlocked for some time, the two men are running out of space to maneuver around each other. 
The growing uh, frequency they are starting to collide head on is becoming increasingly difficult to maintain a facade of cooperation. As it stands, the king and his captain uh, are both realizing that the time to take the other out uh, for good is approaching. As the two personalities stand to clash, people are increasingly forced to pick a side or face the consequences of neutrality alone. Well, what what do we want to do? So we get Legionnaire Romain. We have the Carlos Restoration. If we're an autocrat, Carl II is the leader. We go down this path. If we are national populist, we become Legionnaire Rom uh, Romania. Or if we are not national populist and presumably the king is dead. We get the uh, the Mikhail's government. I mean, there's, there's more options here. You could go Mikhail and then immediately elect the Legionnaires for, for another term. What? Do, what? Do, where do we want to go? The Green Prince. I don't actually know who the Green Prince is. You know what? Let, let's let's stand by Corneo and the Legionaries for now. And then maybe we'll go down the Green Prince Street because actually I don't know. I don't. I don't think I've seen him before. Like I'm trying. I'm trying to think if we have, but I don't think so. So maybe, maybe this will be a new, uh, new little path for Romania here. But we have allies. Serbia and Greece are going to be our allies in this war against Bulgaria. Hopefully, both of them will also end up joining those, themselves up with the Russians. I mean, I guess Greece could go socialist. Serbia could also go socialist, which would not be great for us. I mean, let's hope join the uh, international, which is not too, too bad. Union Day. Union Day represents the Union of Principalities of Moldova and Malachia in the 24th of January, 1859. When Alexander uh, Oyankusa was elected as the motor of the two principalities as a way to bypass the ruling that the two cannot unite into a single state. It is regarded as a national holiday in Romania. Thank you for the political power. I appreciate it. So what do we need to do? Has completed focus or parity for all. Has not completed within 180 days. Replace uh, Great Game with, with uh, the King's Dominance. So we need to pass to you. So we need prosperity for all. Which is... Uh, somewhere in here. We got Code of Honor. Old Entente Ties. Future Direction. Pennsylvania or War. Can you, can you actually join the Entente? I mean, I guess, I mean, I, I kind of knew that Romania could join the Entente. I just don't think I've ever actually seen them do it. Access to military. Where, where is, um... Oh, Transylvania does not have... Not the National Spirit of the Great Game. Which, which focus is this? Uh... Prosperity for all. Prosperity. Okay, so it's all the way down here. So we need to get our... Uh, we need to not have an economic crash. So we need to get down here within like three years. I mean, that shouldn't seem so, so bad. Nactinus will spend his influence. For now, the balance of power is equal. Both sides are keeping each other in check. Brass political enemies. Improves his influence. We get leisure and, uh, leisure and dominance. Hard pressed. Let's go with harass political enemies. 14 days on this. I wonder if we really should save our political power to. To just spend on like the highest ones possible. Past populist policies. 2% more support here. Is that really all it does? It doesn't affect um, the dominance man uh, maneuvers at all. Okay, black money is hit. Also, I didn't get a seed. Is anybody actually importing our oil? No, because again, we don't actually own it. Germany owns it. Which is very sad. Which means that Romania doesn't produce any natural resources whatsoever. We got factions in the Legion. Legion is hardly a unitary movement. Even though each and uh, everyone only seeks greatness for Romanians, many disagree with the exact methods on the question of leadership. Uh, Corneo solidified his position as the uh, clear leading personality among the movement. The position is not an eternal one. And his grip on the movement requires constant reaffirming. Right now, it's uncontested. Who do you think the radical wing is? Well, right now, we're at three. So, I, th I think we're okay for now. But if I want to read you... 
The assassination of the beloved captain in the royal legionary conflict has become too much to bear. A firm hand is needed. The right man has stood up at the time. Uh, Success is reestablishing control over world legion in the country. Prince Alexandru Canazzino. Look, I'm going to butcher every single name. I don't speak Romanian. Nor do I, I guess I actually don't also speak a romance language. Maybe it would help me out a little bit. Okay, Austria's out of Italy. Fantastic for us. Maybe we can uh, become friends at some point. Right now, the king's weakening. Pounds of power has been disrupted, continually lowering our nation's stability. Though this may be necessary for a time, we should try to resolve this as soon as possible. Berlin crashes, or Berlin crash hits Bucharest. Today was a dreadful day for the stock market of Bucharest as many important banks and corporations went into a nosedive after a chain reaction that began with the crash of Berlin, uh, Berlin stock market. Many businesses in Romania have been owned by large German and Austrian corporations, which are now in ruins. The unemployment rate has climbed sky high, and the export sector has been hit bad after the demand for oil and agricultural products in Central Europe has plummeted. Why? When will there ever be a time where demand for oil plummets? I feel like you kind of always need oil. Decision available. We can hold a rally here. We get more. We get more weekly stability. Let's bring them back up to equilibrium. I'm not too sure why it would make things equal. Equal. I don't. The old guard gains power. The worker core gains power. Ten percent is pretty nice on this. So the radicals, the assassins were punished for on regicide charges. So I think we want to get the radicals in here. Yeah, let's just let's seek support from the radicals. Yeah, and we get a new political advisor. Yeah, we want to get the radical ring in here. Let's just go balls to the wall. Look, uh, what's what's his name again? Cornelio. He's too much of a moderate. He's too much of a moderate here. So let's let's bring in the radical wing of the legionnaire party. I believe he was the one that was actually in charge of Romania during World War II. Or he, he was leading the Iron Guard in World War II. Romania in, in World War II is a, <laughs> is a messy matter. Radicals gain power? Absolutely. Give me the radical support. I want to see the radicals in here. If they end up shooting uh, Corneo, that, that's by all means. That's okay. Pass more pop uh, parties. A weakening grip. We improve our influence. We want to get you done. Oh, we need to actually, you know, eh, we'll wait on this and then we'll go for nationalization of foreign assets. We'll rush our way straight down the prosperity for all. Yes. Do we, what do we need here? Do we need all of this? Presumably. Wait, wait do we not? To get the prosperity for all, we need... One of these two. And these need one of these two. But you don't need that. Like, these three don't actually affect Prosperity for All. So I guess we just go, go like, one, two. Uh, make, uh, we can only choose this one. So we go continue Legion or Reform. Uh, and then we got to go to Diverse Agriculture. And then we got to do Mechanized Farming. Restore the Grazing Lands. And then we go with Prosperity for All. And then we'll get rid of our Great Game Modifiers. We're at 119 political power. I wonder if we want to... I mean, Perch Mobilization's already opened up for us, which I'm pretty happy with. So I'm kind of leaning in that direction. Okay, give me uh, Mechanical Computing, please and thank you. If you maybe take this province when the War of Bulgaria begins, maybe we can kind of cut these three divisions off. Quickly encircle and kill them, and then move our way straight down to both the Ottoman border and towards Sofia. Okay, Code of Honor is completed. Now, let us go straight into nationalization of foreign assets. Is there any good military staff we have? Army morale, which is supply penalties, not actually that great. I mean, just 10% more attack is always nice as well. I mean, we will be going to war pretty soon. I mean, our manpower is okay. War support's fine. Stability is in the absolute gutter, but don't worry about that too much. I don't think, like, stability is not going to be looking good until after we probably defeated Bulgaria and solidified our power. 
Immediately following the reading of the Declaration of Independence in Parliament by Mikhail Kong Ishlanio, <laughs> on the 9th of May, the 10th of May has borne witness not just uh, to his adoption, uh, but <laughs> adoption, my god, um, by the then Dom Carl I, but also to the arrival of the same Carl the Romanian in 1866 and his acclamation as Dom, as well as the coronation of Carl I as king in 1881. Romania thus became a kingdom. Uh, thus late in its history, the 10th of May was designated as National Day, being joyously celebrated within the kingdom to this day, in spite of its short-lived prohibition by German occupation authorities during the Weltkrieg. This year has proven to uh, be not that different in that regard, as celebrations sweep across the nation once more, with whatever uh, divisions present within the country being temporarily uh, buried, uh, replaced by a common sentiment of belonging and national unity. Crowds in Bucharest uh, attend the military parade within the capital, and smaller-scale parades ensue within other provincial capitals. The city continue, or the day continues uh, with other cultural activities for culminating in a royal speech and firework display all across the country. Give me a little bit of stability, thank you. How much are we losing right now? 0.5? I mean, that, that's not good. And the king actually just gives us a political power, or gives us stability loss. I mean, it's a political power gain, and that, that's nice to have, for sure. Let me concentrate in history one. Decisions available, land reform. I mean, I guess we could. We can bring it back up to. Do you, what, do, what do you do? It gives me war, more war, war, more manpower. I don't know if I really care about that so much, to be completely honest with you. I think I think it's mostly fine. We're 1 to 50, get ourselves up to early mobilization. Fantastic. And I think with that, it's going to be a good launching off point for this series. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, if you've enjoyed, give a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you hated it, you thought this video sucked, give it a thumbs down. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.